Okay, you guys have your Bibles? Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I want to, first of all, um, address something that the Lord wanted me to address because He knows that uh, Christians like psychological and philosophical messages that make them feel good. And the Lord told me that some people, and I'm not saying everyone, but the Lord said some people took, and it may not even be anybody in this house, it may be somebody on the internet, uh, because how many of you know that, that we are still preaching to a lot of people across the nation Amen. and in other countries? Uh, but when the Lord gave me the, the message, when he said that um, we are all operating off of his righteousness and not your own, you remember that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Now the Lord said some people may take that wrong because sometimes people are looking for um, something softer to stomach. And they may have heard that wrong. To, to make it seem as though the Lord is saying, if you, if, if you fall into sin, don't worry about it. Everything is okay. Right. And that's not what God is saying. Amen. That message was directed to people who are giving their all, trying to work, work out their salvation and walk in Christ. Yes, yes. God only had me to say that so that you know that you're not going to be able to do it in perfection. Amen. That's the reason he gave. It was not like, okay, oh good, I have a, a leeway that I can get involved with a little sin and God's righteousness still stays with me. Yes, God's righteousness is in you, but it's not a leeway for you to continue in sin that's right. and to think that God is still with your plan. Amen. So that's where people, God said, he said that message was for people who are trying their best and, and are striving for perfection to let you know you're not going to hit perfection. Amen. But his righteousness is still in you. Right. The Lord wanted me to tell you that because some people, um, and God is funny how some people really go to church and they are, you know, have you ever like, um, I was, I was watching the commercial and I walked into the bar and said, Bud Light, please. And I thought about it and I said, you know, that's just how Christians are. They walk up in church and they say, Pastor, Bible Light, please. You know, can I have Light Bible? I don't want, I said, what's Light Bible? Well, you know, with less conviction and truth, just something that I can stomach and, you know, take with me. And God is not trying to give you that type of gospel. The Bible is convicting for a reason because it's trying to get you into heaven. The Bible is truth for a reason because it's trying to get you into heaven. So, um, I don't want to sit here and try to serve you Bible light or diet Bible, one calorie Bible. <laughs> Hoping that, you know, you, it makes you feel better about you. That's good. You know, so... Um, Anyway, the Lord spoke to me on that behalf. Amen. Now, the, the other, the, the message that God has given me today, um, man, I keep forgetting what God told me to do. Okay, first of all, I have to say this. In comparison to what I just said, the Lord said to tell you this. Anybody who is a professional runner who does not train will lose a race. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Any student who wants a degree who does not study will fail. Any Christian who does not study their Bible regularly and pray regularly will fail. Amen. And does not surround themselves around strong Christians, a company of Christians, will fail. Amen. Why do we think that Life's issues don't affect Christian issues. Because if you were a professional athlete, you would train every day, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
Because you know that you want to win. Right. Why is it that being a Christian, you don't train every day? What are you? You're not in this to win? You're in this for third place? Mm. This, is the, this is the only game that you play that if you lose, it's an eternal loss. <laughs> so I, I would suggest that, you know, you take the world's advice because the world is training for, for, for medals. Amen. We're training for an eternal glory. Praise God. Amen. Okay, now I've done it. I did what the Lord told me to do. Amen. Now, here is the message today. Um, we have, for six years, warned the world about Christ's return. Um, and the Lord was speaking to me concerning the warning. The six year warning. And that went out. And how many of you know that 2010, we didn't just have S4C on fire. We didn't just have Long Beach on fire about the return of Christ. People were giving their lives to Christ daily. Yes. Not only here in the church, but Switzerland, yes. Russia, yes. Germany, Germany, China, Japan. Yes. And they were emailing me. I was getting emails from Japan and all these places of people saying, I heard the message. I'm, we've turned our lives over to Jesus Christ. All my kids have accepted Christ. Yes. You know, all of this stuff, right, that yes. was going on. So we were warning people because of the return of Christ. Yes. So when it didn't, the rapture didn't happen at the end of 2010. So the Lord uh, was speaking to me concerning this matter. And he gave it to me in kind of a story. So I need you to listen for a minute, okay? Amen. Amen. Now. Pretend you're at the movies, right? You got your popcorn, whatever. And um, in the beginning of the movie, there's a woman, she's sitting at her desk. She's sitting at home and she's relaxing. She's on the email and she's going through her Facebooks and everything. She's uh, recently been separated from her husband, but, you know, she's dealing with that. She gets a knock on her door. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Weird. Praise God. She goes to the door, and she looks. She doesn't recognize who this person is, so she says, yes, may I help you? And he says, I'm Detective Johnson. I'm with the FBI. Could you please open up? I need to talk to you. She opens up the door. He walks in, and he says, please have a seat. He says, I want to tell you something. Your husband who you've been separated from, or ex-husband, whatever you would like to call him, is planning on killing you. And I am here to warn you to be careful. Well, she said, well, why don't you arrest him? She said, we can't arrest people for what they are. we think they're going to do. So I'm here to warn you that he may do this. Now, I'm going to show you some evidence of why we know this is going to happen. He took out a picture, and the picture was a picture of her husband at a gun store purchasing a gun, a rifle. So she said, oh my God. Well, he does like hunting, she said. Well, maybe he's just uh, buying a, a gun for hunting. And he said, there's more. He said, let me show you this picture. This is him at the Target range. Look at the uh, targets that he was using, what he wrote on them. And she went, oh my God, he wrote my name on the target. So he's shooting at the target with my name on it? So she's really like concerned now, right? He said, but there's more. This is a bullet that he had engraved, 20 of them, by a professional engraver, and it has your name on it. Mm. And he put that on the table. And she went, oh my God, he's going to try to kill me. So she, he said, now listen, he's been married four times before he married you. And all four of his wives, he has killed on Friday. He bought the gun on Monday. He went to the, to the uh, shooting gallery on a Tuesday. 
And we figure by Friday, it's going to happen. 